Hey there, Alex Kidman here, today taking a look at the Acer Predator Helios Neo 16. Heck of a name for an interesting gaming laptop. Now, when you say gaming laptop to most people, they tend to think, wow, okay, that's going to be really expensive. Because, well, yeah, gaming laptops generally are quite expensive. You want the high-end performance, you've got to pay the high-end price. But there is another market of gaming laptops, and that's in that more affordable space. They still sell themselves as gaming laptops because they do cost a little bit more than just a standard everyday consumer notebook, but they don't quite cost the premium money by slicing away just a few features while leaving a gaming core. And that's pretty much exactly what the Acer Predator Helios Neo 16 does. The Predator Helios Neo 16 certainly looks the part of a gaming laptop, as long as you read that to mean Lots of RGB lighting and an angular design. At 2.81 by 36.06 by 27.94 centimetres and 2.8 kilos, it's certainly got the heft of a gaming laptop, which is actually a little bit odd because to keep pricing low, the Predator Helios Neo 16 has a more plastic build than you'll find on many gaming laptops. And that usually means a lighter system, not a heavier one. It's built around a 16 inch LED LCD display with a resolution of either 2560 by 1200 or 1920 by 1200, depending on the model you buy. My test rig was the lower spec 1920 by 1200 pixel model. And look, obviously that's not super sharp, it's not 4K for example, but it's at least reasonably quick with a 165 hertz capable display, so it's also G-Sync capable if that matters to you. And it should matter to you because in gaming terms, what you really want to avoid is screen tearing what you want are those fast refresh rates. Now, when we come to the keyboard, Ace has made some interesting choices. Yeah, of course, look, it's RGB lit, that goes without saying, but I'm more interested in the layout here because a lot of 16 inch laptops, not just gaming ones, just stick a standard keyboard in the middle of a 16 inch bay, leaving a lot of gap space around it that generally tends to feel wasted. Aces instead used just about every last centimeter it could, cramming in a full number pad on the side. And look, for some gamers and some game types, obviously that's a plus, but I'm not entirely sure that the compromises it brings will work for everyone. You do get, for example, full-sized cursor keys, but they're offset into the base of the number pad area, which could be quite awkward if your muscle memory maps finger movements around that pad spacing and around the number pad being its own distinct entity. It is at least nicely allocated for ports. On the right hand side, you've got dual USB-A for your peripherals, while on the left hand side, you get micro SD, ethernet, USB, and audio jacks. And then on the back, you've got dual USB-C Thunderbolt ports and full HDMI as well as power. There's also these weird little blue accents on the rear fins of the laptop for, well, um, reasons? The Predator Helios Neo 16 runs on Intel Core i7 processors, specifically the i7-13700HX, with either 16 gig or 32 gig of onboard memory, and NVIDIA RTX 4060 or 4070 GPUs with 8 gig of RAM. The model Acer loaned me was the entry level model, that'll run you about two grand here in Australia, and that comes with the RTX 4060, 16 gig of RAM, and a 512 gig SSD. And look, as gaming laptop specs go in 2023, that's certainly not top tier, but it's a two grand laptop, not a four grand laptop. And let's face it, if you spent four grand and someone spending two grand was getting the same, you'd be slightly ticked off. You'd wonder where the extra money was going. In this case, it's cut down, especially things like that screen resolution are cut down to a level, to a price point. That is one of the compromises of a sort you've got to put up with. But what kind of compromises are we talking about? And look, with full honesty in mind, a lot of the gaming laptops that have come across my reviews bench of late have been higher spec, higher price models than this. So it's not really a huge surprise that the Helios Neo 16 benchmarks a little lower than they do in you know standard benchmarks in your PC Mark 10 and 3D Mark and things like that. I have full specs for those and those comparative benchmarks in my written review, which is going to be linked below if you care to read it. But the basic form there is, yeah, it's not as fast as something that you can buy for four to five grand, because of course it's not. What it is, 
is solid enough. It's certainly not a bad buy because it's that question of knowing what you're getting for the price you're paying. As an entry level way into gaming, the Helios Neo 16 is really nicely capable of playing back most AAA titles, certainly most of the things I've thrown at it, and obviously this is going to depend on your games of choice. And clearly, as I very much like to do, you've got a much wider library of older PC games that'll run just fine, or at least as finely as Windows 11 will allow them. And that's a whole different discussion, of course. That's got nothing to do with this laptop. But you've got a huge library of games is the point I'm trying to make here. There are a couple of catches to be aware of, though, specific to this model. For a start, the speakers are kind of mediocre. There's just not a lot of oomph. And while I generally prefer a more balanced speaker for everyday use, for gaming, you want that bass oomph. You want those shotgun blasts to really sound the part. These are a little on the weaker side, and they're really not helped by the fans. So the fans do a great job of keeping the Predator cool, that's for sure, but they do so in a really, really noisy way. And I think this has a lot to do with the plastic build of the laptop, with the fact that it can just rattle around a bit more. You really do hear them when they kick up. Now, my solution to that, the way I've kind of gotten around this while I've been testing, honestly, is to plug in a set of headphones because you get past the fan noise and you get better audio in the same hit. But that's not a good thing in and of itself. You shouldn't have to buy gaming headphones to enjoy good gaming sound out of a gaming laptop. What about battery life? Well, look, everyone just say it after me in unison. Gaming laptops don't have good battery life. I could probably put that to music someday. But now that that statement is out of the way, I can have a look at just how badly the Acer Predator Helios Neo 16 performs in terms of its battery life. And look, it actually takes a little digging to find much about Acer's claims around this particular laptop, apart from the fact that it's packing in a 90 watt battery. But then I guess if you never claim a specific battery life, you can never really disappoint anyone, can you? And look, realistically, the Acer Predator Helios Neo 16 performed almost exactly as I'd expect any gaming laptop of its size too. My standard is to run it through two specific battery exhaustion tests. Firstly, just a local 1080p video low usage test, just to get a kind of baseline maybe best figure. And then PC Mark 10's gaming battery test for a more heavy duty model, because your usage will most likely fall between those two points. Yes, you can push it harder. Yes, you can use it softer, but most likely you're gonna see battery life between those two points. And indeed, I got a range. So just with the video test, it lasted for 458 minutes. That's actually quite good for a gaming laptop. For the PC Mark gaming test, 101 minutes, quite a bit less, but very much within that kind of expected range. Interestingly, it did better than many of the other higher end gaming laptops I've tested recently in this test. But again, it's pushing less power. You'd kind of expect that because there is an absolute direct correlation between the amount of power it has to push out for pushing those polygons and the amount of battery life it's going to take in return for that. Still, it's generally fairly pleasing for battery life within that space of gaming laptops for sure. But you will still have to reach for its power adapter before all that long. And you're going to need reasonable muscles if this is a system that you plan on taking around the place. Because like so many other gaming laptops, the power supply is an absolute brick. It's basically a kilo in its own right. So that makes for quite a hefty little system to lug around. Again, very much par for the course for gaming systems in this price bracket and above that you have to carry a fair amount of weight in order to have a fair amount of weighty gaming power. So would I recommend it? Yeah, I would. I think the Predator Helios Neo 16 fulfills a need rather well. It's not the machine that you're going to pull out if you want to impress your mates, but it is a machine that does a job at a price point fairly well. Basically, if you're looking for a little more gaming grunt in your life and you don't have an idle four grand or more to spend getting there, then the Helios Neo 16 will do that quite nicely as long as you can ignore the fan noise.